Sanding is complete. We are gonna spray the parts that I did not sand. You guys are never gonna believe what I finally got my hands on! A coveted arched cabinet, and I cannot wait to show you what I've got in mind. I literally cannot put into words how excited I am to work on this piece. I have been searching high and low at thrift stores, estate sales, Facebook marketplace, on the daily, and I finally found this guy. It's kind of a long story, but to put it short, I found it back in March, and I was on my way to go pick it up when the lady actually backed out and said that a family member wanted it. And I was so bummed, but I kept on looking, and then like six months later, this month she posted it again on Facebook marketplace just for a hundred dollars more so it was 200 now it was 300 she would not budge on the price even though she knew it was me but I could not pass it up and so Neiman and I drove about an hour to go pick it up and bring it home and it all came home in one piece so let's get started. We need to get rid of this golden oak finish because it is just not in style anymore and we need to bring the look into the modern day. First things first, we're gonna go ahead and take the glass out. I got really lucky because when we got home, this piece was missing or so we thought, but we found it. It was actually wedged back there between the mirror and that little wooden piece that goes across the middle and somehow it wasn't broken or shattered or anything. So super glad that that kept intact. I'm, sh I'm not 100% sure if I'm gonna put the glass back in when I'm finished with this, uh, but I know for sure that we need to take it out to get the look that we want to begin with. So I believe there are just these little rubber pieces that pop out and then they're gonna be really easy to place back in there. Just using some painter's tape to mark these, all the pieces, so that I know exactly where to put them back and so that I don't lose any pieces. I took the door off so that I could work on it better. Um, just because of the technique that I'm gonna be using, I need access to all of the wood. So I'm gonna take these hinges off as well. in there for safekeeping. And the last part of the disassembly is going to be to remove the mirror. And I'm gonna call Neiman in to help me so that we don't break it. That's one way to do it. So although I'm taking the mirrors out, I do have other project ideas for them. So don't worry, they're gonna get used in another way, just not on this cabinet anymore. So stay tuned for that type of DIY. Here, do the same thing over there. That makes me sad. Never mind, don't stay tuned for a DIY. Oh, 
on this one at least. Not for the arch one. Darn. That's whack. One thing on the plus side, it came in three nice pieces. It didn't shatter. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the staples on the edges. Taking those staples out was no joke. Thank you to Neiman for helping me. Those things were in there, but now that they're out, we can go ahead and clean. And I'm gonna keep it on its back here for a minute because when I leaned it over, I did notice that it's pretty dirty underneath. So always check the bottoms of your furniture pieces and then we'll set it back up and I'll give everything else a clean as well. And thank you so much to Dixie Bell for sponsoring this video. We are gonna be using all of their products to get the look that I am so excited for. It's a lot lighter now and much easier to manipulate without that backing in there. I am using Dixie Bell's White Lightning Cleaner. I just have dumped the granule substance in this spray bottle and it's a lot easier to use that way. Or you could put it in a bucket and use it that way with a rag. Um, this is probably one of my favorite cleaners. It just really gets the job done. It makes sure that you don't have any oils or dirts left on your piece of furniture, which is essential in moving on to the sanding step or else your sandpaper is just gonna get all gooped up it's also essential for the paint to adhere and so many other things to get a great finish. Always begin with the end in mind. If you want a great finish, you need to start by giving it a really great clean. All right, now that everything's cleaned, which honestly it didn't take me very long at all, this piece wasn't that dirty and there's not a lot of surface area to clean, but it's time to sand. So for the look that I am uh, trying to achieve, I need to sand back the original finish to the raw wood. So I am pretty sure that this is solid wood, but it's very thin wood. And so I am gonna be using a 120 grit on my surf prep sander. And then I also have my interface pad that is going to help me get around any curves and things like that. But first I'm gonna go ahead and do the flatter spaces with the 120 and we'll kind of work our way from there. I'm gonna switch to an 80 grit because it's definitely solid wood. The 120 is taking a little bit longer than I'd like it to to get through the finish. So an 80 grit should be okay since we're not working with veneer and it, it, I'm not really worried about like blowing through any surface. Okay, so I'm at the top here and I am almost done sanding this curve, but when I'm here at the top, I see this line and then there's a couple of veneer or uh, just wood gouges right here. So this is okay because we aren't going to be seeing the top, but I don't want to leave it like this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some black Dixie mud and this is like a wood filler and I just am using black um, and you'll find out a little bit later why I'm using black uh, but this is going to blend in the best with the look that I'm going for so I'm just gonna fill in these little areas here there's a crack down the middle where the two pieces of wood meet and then like I said down here at the bottom, there is that huge gouge out of there. We'll probably have to do a couple different layers of the Dixie mud, especially on this large gouge. But I wanted to get the first one applied while I'm still sanding since I already sand this area. That way it'll have time to dry and then I'll come apply more if needed. I love the versatility of the Dixie Mud and how it comes in black, white, and brown because if I were to have used like a white 
wood filler or even a brown wood filler on this. I just don't think that my look would come out right. Um, so the option to have the black is really nice. It's also really easy to like manipulate and it dries fairly quickly so that we could sand here pretty soon. Like this stuff's already pretty much dry. So I'm gonna continue sanding. All right, it is done. Sanding is complete. So my next step is actually gonna be to tape off the areas that I sanded because I wanna do a paint wash on those, but then the areas that I didn't sand and I left the golden oak color, I want to paint and I wanna use my paint sprayer because it's just gonna go a lot faster. So I'm just gonna use some painter's tape. It's gonna take me a minute, but it's gonna go, it, like in the end, it's just gonna be faster and look nicer. Now that all the taping is done, we are gonna spray the parts that I did not sand because I just want that to be a solid color. So I'm gonna use Dixie Belle's silk paint in the color Anchor, which is the black, and I've got it loaded up in my Wagner spray gun here. And I think this is just gonna be the easiest, quickest way to get the paint on there rather than taking it by a brush. So I'm gonna put my mask on and spray a coat of the black. All right, that's coat one on the black. I'm gonna let it dry for a bit here and then we will spray coat number two. I am bound and determined to get this paint on tonight. So bear with me as it gets a little bit darker. It's a little bit, you know, getting darker a little bit earlier now this time of year, but we do have so much going on with the storefront plus keeping up with our Thursday furniture flips. So sometimes it means working a little bit later and working in the dark, which I truly don't mind because I'm having a blast on this project. It's day two, it's sunny out. All right, it's time to cut the backer board here for the back of the cabinet. So if you remember, I broke the mirror, we broke the mirror. I just wasn't gonna keep it anyway. I think I want some different interest back there. So I picked up some wood beadboard and it's just it's just like a pine beadboard. So it's solid wood, but it's like a piece of plywood. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it to size so that it can fit on the back of the arch. I'm using the backer board that was behind the mirror. Even though we ripped it, I just kind of placed it um, back together so that I had a great outline. And I'm just gonna take my pen and outline it so that I can use my jigsaw and cut around the lines. I got that one traced. Now, actually, I think I'm gonna use my jigsaw and my circular saw. The circular saw will be a lot easier to just cut a straight line here on the edge of it. And then the jigsaw will be great for the curve. All right. First cut. 
cut, done. Kind of got off my line just a tad bit, but that's okay. Um, I'll just kind of sand that back a little bit later. Now we're gonna do the curved portion. I didn't go exactly on the line, but that's okay because I knew it was gonna splinter a bit and it's not too hard to sand the plywood to the line. It's maybe, I mean, like an eighth of an inch off. So I cut it a tad bit bigger, but I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up and then we'll move on to cutting some shelves. This isn't the final, final look because this isn't gonna stay the wood color, but I think it mostly fits. Oh yeah. That's gonna look sweet with my idea. Next, I'm gonna cut the shelves. So I just got one of the glass shelves that came in the cabinet and that's what I'm using to measure and kind of trace along again. I think what I'm gonna do is since these are just less than 12 inches deep, I'm this is 48 inches, so I'm just gonna make my four shelves right here. So I'm just drawing a line where I'm gonna need to cut my first cut with my saw. Okay, ready for first cut. Four shelves cut, kinda even-ish. <laughs> We're gonna do some fixes and then we'll move on to the next step. to put the edge banding around the edges of these shelving units. So with the plywood, um, the edges aren't finished. So what we wanna do is make them look like they were finished. So that is when you get the edge banding and it's actually just a, like you just gotta heat it up because it's already pre-glued. So I've got my little Cricut iron here. I figured this would be a perfect tool to help heat that up and iron it onto the edges. I got this on Amazon. It's birch just like the wood is. It does look a little bit different, but that's okay because we're gonna be matching everything here in the next step. But I've never done the edge banding before. I don't think it is a very hard concept. So I am just gonna go ahead and go for it. Uh, the one thing I I think I'll want to um, just do one side at a time instead of like wrapping it around the corner edge. Um, and I'm also going to put it in the middle of the three quarters inch birch because this is a, probably a half inch plywood, so it's gonna be thinner, but then we will go back in later and cut the excess edge banding off. So that's why I just wanna put it in the middle. That way I make sure everything is covered very well. And then I'm just gonna take my little iron and if you don't have a little Cricut iron, um, any iron would work. And we're just basically warming up the glue. We don't wanna burn anything, discolor it, but we just wanna warm up the glue so that it sticks to the edge of the plywood here. I'm gonna do all the short sides first and then move on to the long sides. So something that I decided last night is that instead of keeping this base on it, that it's there, we're gonna make it a little bit more modern and I'm gonna add some little legs and I think it's going to bring this together super well. So that's why I didn't paint this or worry about taking, taping it off because I'm going to break it off or take it off. I, I um, am not 100% sure how it is 
you know, attached. And so we're just gonna do some figuring out and some, some pounding and, you know, figure out how it's attached so that we can get it unattached. And then what I'll have to do, I think, is put another board under here uh, so that I can screw the legs in and it has plenty of support under there um, for any weight that this cabinet is going to be holding. Let's do it. <laughs> the girls wanted to be in our video. Say hi. Hi. Bye. 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 success. So instead of using a board down here, since I had to keep some of this as the support since the bottom of the cabinet is connected to it, I am actually going to just utilize the portions that I cut off right here and use these as little stabilizers for the legs or supports or where I'm going to drill the legs into. So I'm just going to use my brad nailer and a one inch nail. Oh my goodness. And secure these. Okay, and it's not going through the top because there's plenty of room. And I like to just ensure that there is plenty of support. And then my leg will go right here in the middle. So I've got three more. All right, now we have area for my legs to screw into. So I didn't even use the blocks. <laughs> I was able to just use the edges, so that was great. Um, so the, the little brackets are on. I'm not gonna put the legs on just yet because I'm gonna paint them. And then I just wanted to say, shout outs to Ryobi. They got every tool in the books and I got them all. And I love that I can switch out the batteries for each tool and I don't have to have one for every single tool because they all are compatible. Next step, take the painter's tape off. All right guys, this is where this project is really gonna start coming together. I'm gonna go ahead and peel all of this painter's tape off to reveal that wood underneath. It's time for me to tell you what I'm doing on this thing. Right now, it's black in the inside and wood color tone raw wood on the outside. We are not keeping it that way. I am gonna be using Dixie Bell's Caviar, which is the black chalk paint on the Dixie Bell line. So I used the silk black on the inside and for, and then so I'm gonna be using a paint wash on the outside and my personal preference is to do a paint wash with chalk paint. You can do a paint wash with whatever type of paint you want. It's totally up to you. I feel as though a chalk paint kind of like seeps down into the wood just a little bit better. In my experience, I don't know, but I have never done a black paint wash, black stain. The reason that I wanted to do this instead of painting it full on is because I want to see that wood grain. I want to see the, the wood pop through the color. So as usual with a paint wash, we're just going to pour in a bit of paint. I am not great at doing measurements. So, I mean, you saw how much I just poured in and then we're gonna do a bit more water because we want it to be pretty liquidy and we can always add 
more paint if needed. I do have a lot of surfaces to cover. So I don't know, that was probably like a 75-25 ratio water to paint, water 75, paint 25. The more water you use, the lighter it's gonna be. Um, so I'm just gonna test it out on my surface here. I like to wear gloves and then I'll wipe it back with some rags. The gloves just really are to make my hands less messy because I'm a pretty messy painter slash everything. I'm pretty messy with everything. You are not lying. <laughs> um, but it's okay. So I got Neiman to clean up after me. All right. You are lying. I'm ready. Oh. <laughs> Do your job. <laughs> So I, I also like to use my mister bottle to kind of wet the wood a tad bit. And then that'll just help the water and the paint kind of seep into the wood. So I'm just gonna wet this whole side. Might have to come back with some more water. I love it already. And if I want it to be a bit darker, I can always go back with another coat. This is still gonna be drying because it's very wet since of all, because of all the water I used. But that's why you work in sections. So this section's done and I'll move on to the next section. And then once this is dry, we'll be able to tell what it's really gonna truly look like. And we'll be able to decide if I want it to be darker or like it dries. These are the little little feet, little nubs that I'm gonna be putting on the bottom of the arch. So I also wanted those to be a black paint wash here. All the paint washing is done except I think on the backer board here and then on the curio like the cabinet itself I want to do another coat because I think I just want it to be darker I love the way that the shelves turned out the thing is that they're all three different types of wood so this was pine the shelves were birch the cabinet shell was oak so just they take paint washes and stains differently. Um, so once these dry, I'm gonna come back probably off camera and do some paint washes, another round of them, and then we'll be able to assemble tomorrow. So I did a couple more coats of the paint wash and it is looking excellent, exactly what I had in my mind. But now it's time for the top coat. I'm using the clear coat in the 
flat finish for this because I don't want any sheen on the piece and the flat is going to give me that matte look. So I've got my sprayer loaded up already. I am going to turn the settings down a bit because the top coat is a lot thinner than the paint. And so I'm going to go ahead and test it out, make sure our settings are good. And we're going to do top coat on the arch, the back of the arch, as well as the shelves. That's it for top coat. Let's assemble these. All right, it's a moment of truth for two things. One, we're gonna pick it up and see if I nailed like through so that you can see the nails on the inside. And two, we're gonna see if it looks good. Let's put a glass shelf in there too. My cabinet is complete. To say this cabinet is a labor of love is a major understatement. I poured my heart into this. I am so, so, so proud of how it turned out. I worked on this thing for two and a half days straight, basically not doing anything else and Although there were some areas where I needed to be flexible with the end result, I love how it turned out. And what I'm specifically talking about is you might have noticed that instead of using the shelving that I cut and edge banded and paint washed and top coated, I in the end just liked the way that the glass looked better. As well as I just think that I still have some work to do on perfecting building shelves like that and with the price point that I'm going to be asking for this I know that it has to be perfect and I knew that those shelves weren't perfect so I couldn't sell it at that price. I can't stop looking at it. I'm so happy that I finally got my hands on one and I mean, it just came all together. Like my vision is this piece. And I think it was a great addition, the last minute addition that I added, these little nubby legs. I think it's so cute and it modernizes it. Those like squared off bases a lot of the times are on the older furniture and taking those off and getting things off the ground a little bit just modernizes them. And it's a simple thing to do to modernize furniture. So that totally changed the look of it. And then I wanna know your guys' thoughts. First of all, what do you think of the whole project? And second of all, what do you think about me adding the glass back, like the glass paneling on the door and the sides and up there? My gut is telling me that it looks really good without the glass. 
it would be a lot less of a hassle to clean, to change things out decor wise for a person who were to buy it. So let me know down in the comments what you think. Should I keep the glass or should I leave it as I have it now? So this flip will not be listed on Facebook Marketplace. I'm gonna be holding on to it until our grand opening of our storefront, which is November 4th here in Omaha, Nebraska. So it will be available for purchase at our storefront when that opens, which I'm so excited to start kind of stocking up some furniture. Um, but basically everything that I do and from now until then will start going into the store. If you guys are interested in attending our grand opening on November 4th, we do have a link down below to a Facebook group event put on by Furniture Flipping Teacher that you can RSVP. Check out all the details that will be coming soon. And the best part about this arch is that I have another one that I actually found on the same day. Get subscribed down below because I'll be flipping that in another video coming up very soon. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the flip side.